journalism has been changed in Kashmir after 5th August and it has been changed forever. I don't know how to explain what a communication blackout is basically. You will have to live through it to understand. Where is freedom of expression? Where is freedom of press? I don't know. We haven't seen that thing here. Press is not free. India's government has made a significant move to take direct control of the state of Kashmir. Home Minister Amit Shah arrived this morning to Parliament and told Parliament that he was revoking Article 370 which gave the state special status and dividing Kashmir into two union territories Ladakh and JNK. The government has put parts of Indian administered Kashmir under security lockdown and has deployed tens of thousands of additional troops. Internet is blocked and phone lines are down. On 5th August 2019, amidst a communication blackout, the government of India abrogated Article 370 of the Indian Constitution. Article 370 guaranteed special autonomy to Jammu and Kashmir and gave independence over matters excluding foreign affairs, defence and communication. While the restrictions were eased in Jammu within a month, Mobile services began to be restored only after 72 days in Kashmir and 2G internet services returned after seven long months. Even today, as the world and the country fights the COVID-19 pandemic, communication services remain hindered in the region. You know, just a week before Article 370 was uh, removed, there was chaos in Kashmir. A lot of confusion and different theories were being floated. It was apparent that something big is going to happen. People were stockpiling, they were buying medicine, rushing away to petrol pumps to get their cars filled with fuel. Troops were fanned across roads. Even as a journalist, I was not aware up to 11 a.m. Later in the day, we, we managed to switch on TV and watch India's Home Minister announcing in the Parliament that they have uh, done away with the Article 370. There was no communication, flow of information was zero. You know, being a journalist, our job is to report, to tell story, what is happening on ground. But there was nothing, there was no information, like what is happening. In, in fact, we were not knowing what is happening right next to us. The national and the international media gave more coverage uh, at that time to the development than the local media. If a researcher come to Kashmir and try to find out through local media what was happening, they will not find anything. It was as if after 5 August nothing happened here. That black hole that exists now in that period, it is something which is going to have ramifications which are beyond our comprehension. I didn't have any news about my own staffers. I was worried about their own safety, uh, knowing what Kashmir is and uh, gradually learning that, you know, massive arrests have been made. So these were some of the anxieties and concerns in my mind when I went to court. On August 10, I petitioned the Supreme Court against the communication ban, saying that, uh, you know, we were unable to work. In uh, Jammu, where I am based, uh, the reportage was so limited. We didn't have any direct contact with the people. There were tensions, there was violence, there were human rights violations. Kashmir is a place constantly where there is so much of news on an everyday basis and suddenly there is a silence. Uh, that kind of silence I'd never heard before. Since 2019, internet access has been disrupted in Jammu and Kashmir by 90 government-imposed internet shutdowns, the highest in the world. With landline and mobile phones not working, the local media suffered, grinding their work to a halt. The local newspapers either stopped publishing or produced truncated versions. Their websites remained dated for months. And with that silence came human rights abuses, from curbs on freedom of expression to arbitrary arrests, unlawful detentions and harassment.
we are faced with undeclared censorship in the sense that they create situations where it becomes difficult and sometimes even impossible for journalists for reporters to work after 5th of august last year we had to go to the media center and for months we operated from there only and initially with just four computers which were connected with internet and out of those four one was being used by the information department so there were only three desktops available to journalists 200 and sometimes even 300 journalists to work and to file stories and you can imagine how difficult it should have been we're always apprehension that someone is snooping on us uh, our emails are being looked into we didn't know if our emails were secure our passwords were uh, getting copied and all that more than that they were even at the media facilitation center which was highly overcrowded there were regular internet snaps so one day you will come uh, you know with your story and there will be internet shut down the first two weeks after august 5 have uh, been a life changing or probably i should say it, it forced me to give a second thought whether journalism in kashmir is a good option for a profession journalism in kashmir has completely changed because of course, you have to think 10 times whether my reporting is going to perturb somebody or it's going to disturb somebody or am I going to speak truth? How would my truth be perceived? Or am I going to land in the trouble for the truth? Eventually, there's like a lot of um, fear within my friends and family. They ask me, please be careful. And our teachers who teach us in university, uh, no story is greater than life. Sometimes you are trying to cross, heading towards your office, you have a couple of cameras hanging on your shoulders, but still, you have to convince a cop that you are a journalist. And at that moment, he will be like, you have passed, okay, you are allowed by district magistrate, or you are allowed by any authority, but right now I'm the authority. What you are going to do? I don't, I don't, I mean no authority, like you can't call a district magistrate on the spot and ask him that your cop is not allowing me. He has given you a pass. An atmosphere uh, develops where you're being made conscious and cautious. You're being cautioned that you have to be careful about what you're reporting, even if that is the truth, but you still have to be careful and you have to rephrase and present the truth in a different dimensions rather than hitting straight to the target. We were shooting somewhere in downtown when these forces came and they asked us to delete our footage. There, they were like, open your camera and delete it. Most of the journalists like who were with me, they delete the footage, but I somehow managed. I just took that memory card off from the camera and I just, you know, I hide it in my pocket. So, yeah, there are these things which are happening. That too on ground, like just in front of you. These things are happening. You have to keep going with them. Even after relaxation of restrictions, the threats to free press in Jammu and Kashmir have only escalated. Many journalists were assaulted and Azan was one of them. He was physically assaulted while attempting to cover a story at Srinagar's Islamia College of Science where a student protest was underway. There was like a six, ten second clip where I was being thrashed. I think there's a lot that happened before that 10 second clip and after. There were rumours that were floating that there, there is just like how politicians were detained, how activists and lawyers were detained. But there were rumours that uh, journalists will be picked up eventually. Once we started to report and uh, there, some reports were contrary to the claims made by government. We were thinking that there might be a reaction someday but I didn't anticipate it will be uh, me being beaten. I got a couple of uh, calls from officials saying the reports that you're filing are, uh, you know, they are, they are not needed. Naturally when I got beaten I thought this is a product of that. When you when there is no accountability for such an incident, it only emboldens uh, the, the forces here. But it's been seven months and uh, we've not seen any action. And I, honestly, I don't also expect uh, any action to be taken in the near future. Many journalists in Jammu and Kashmir have faced harassment and intimidation, but most don't speak out due to fear of reprisal. Several journalists have been booked under repressive laws, such as the Public Safety Act and Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, adding to the paranoia and instilling fear in others. The 
It was, I think, uh, late April uh, when I got a call from one of my colleagues. Uh, he's also a journalist. So he read out a um, press statement by um, a cyber police station and said that they have mentioned your name. And so I said, but I haven't received any, uh, uh, you know, formal or informal, um, you know, any communication from them. First, I didn't know uh, what the charges were because the charges were vague uh, in one of the statements. The uh, police chief had said uh, there were some provocative adjectives. So if there were provocative adjectives, then you had to see, um, you know, why would cyber police get involved uh, in, in provo because in on Twitter or on Facebook, there are a lot of provocative adjectives. So before uh, me, uh, they also already had booked uh, one Masrat Zehra, a 26-year-old photojournalist. And before that, Pirzad Ashik, another colleague, uh, had a case against him uh, regarding a story. So it was not something uh, related only to me, but it was happening as a pattern, as an ugly pattern where journalists were being routinely summoned for their work. The cases registered are pretty vague because they don't mention which exact post has, is anti-national or is promoting violence. And there was another uh, case slapped against a uh, Hindu correspondent for alleged uh, fake news on grounds that he had not taken an official version. The fact that a lot of journalists in Kashmir, reporters that you talk to, is that they, they mention that they are caught in the dilemma of how to report because in majority cases if you try and approach the officials they are unwilling to speak or they remain inaccessible there's a case of um, Kashmir Wala editor Fahad Shah being grilled twice uh, for several hours uh, over one particular report uh, which he says he's, he's already given documentary evidence also that the fact that every second journalist has been either summoned by the police or questioned on the phone or ticked off or intimidated in some way or the other. All these things are adding to that fear psychosis. In February 2020, Amnesty International India had spoken to several journalists those who agreed to share their concerns only did so under anonymity. In July, many turned down our request to speak on camera for this documentary for fear of reprisal. As COVID-19 tears across the country and families lose their loved ones, the government of India is using this pandemic to escalate its chilling crackdown on press freedoms. If it had been pandemic only, COVID only, that it was okay because it's a global war. People are fighting for it. But here it's something else. They are using COVID as a cover just to carry their operations here, just to suppress its people more because we don't have even the basic rights here. Things really in some ways remained static or they worsened because Kashmir moved, transitioned. And by Kashmir, I would also say Jammu and Kashmir because the restrictions are uh, partially in place even in Jammu. So this uh, region transitioned from one lockdown to another. Gradually, you started uh, realizing that the pandemic was also being used by the state to uh, tighten its control and grip over the region. In the middle of COVID-19, the Jammu and Kashmir administration introduced a new media policy in the region. The draconian and punitive policy openly aims to create a sustained narrative on the functioning of the government in media by checking on anti-national activities, fake news and plagiarism. They have said in this media, new media policy that if you don't follow these directions or if you violate the guidelines or the criteria that they have put there in that media policy, uh, that may lead to denial of advertisement support to you, apart from sharing that information with the security agencies. Because the main revenue uh, for local newspapers comes from government through advertisements. So that's, that's a big, big, big problem. Kashmir has been turned into a union territory. The only union territory where I see the rules are different. You are being told as an organization that you will have a free flow of advertisement only when you post whatever the directorate of information or the government source is going to tell you. There's no space for reporting the other side of the story and those who report the other side of the story land up in uh, being summoned by police or land up being questioned for their Facebook posts or their remarks. Like, there is no uh, freedom of, of expression, even when it comes to their own personal space on social media like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. The new media policy which government has come up with is simply, I think, what the great 
George Orwell had predicted long before. Government wants their side of the story to be told. If it goes against them, they want that to be labeled as anti-national or fake news. The question is who will sit judge on that and who will decide uh, you know, which uh, news or which write-up is anti-national and which is not and which uh, news is fake and which is not and uh, you know who will decide on the ethics if, if things continue as they are the crackdown or the intimidation the threat in, I don't think there will be any journalism personally it will just be another arm of the government just giving out press releases. I personally think that if this continues, um, a lot of people are going to break. When the New York Times, uh, organizations like Washington Post, Independent and Guardian, you know, the world's best newspapers, Wall Street Journal, when they wrote about Kashmir, so there were people from the police who uh, termed that as fake news. So that's it. <laughs> With oppressive curbs on freedom of movement, expression and opinion, it has been a challenging one year for journalists in Jammu and Kashmir. But a small beacon of hope glimmered in May 2020 when three local photojournalists were awarded the prestigious Pulitzer Prize in Feature Photography. Welcomed by the local journalists in the region, the work of the winners has also been termed as anti-national by political leaders in India. It has uplifted our spirits. Also, it's a message to the state and the other institutions which are intimidating journalists. And it's a vindication of that journalists in Kashmir are doing are thorough professionals and they are uh, discharging duties very, very professionally and which is highly appreciated by the journalist bodies across the globe. This is such a big thing for us, like for Kashmiri journalists in particular, because what Indian media or India is saying that everything is normal. They are not acknowledging the struggle of people here. But international audience did. International the people out there know what is happening. They are acknowledging it and that matters to us. Freedom of press is crucial for holding institutions accountable and the present situation raises grave concerns of human rights violations that may occur yet and could remain unreported due to Government of India's near total control over information coming out of Kashmir. The misuse of repressive laws and ushering in of far-reaching policies is resulting in journalists policing themselves in fear of offending the authorities and the government engineering and pushing its own narrative. These brazen attacks on free expression stand to effectively silence the truth. After August 5th, we had several moments where you felt that it's only the government which is able to put out its narrative through uh, different uh, people, whether it was the uh, National Security Advisor Ajit Doval in the first few days, moving around on the empty curfewed roads uh, with everything shut down and sharing a meal with people. You know, when that uh, European delegation came, they were brought in and uh, there was a, you know, guided uh, tour of uh, Kashmir Valley. No media was allowed to uh, go and report or meet uh, the European delegation and find out for themselves or, or cross-question them. Who did they meet? Only select gr group of people were allowed to meet them, invited to meet them. It was not open to every journalist. If you talk about accredited journals, I have been an accredited journalist for the last uh, 35 years. Who are the accredited journalists who are invited to these, uh, you know, press conferences and, you know, uh, with whom you share uh, things? I would like to know. Right now, it's it's uh, it's a very challenging challenging situation. Uh, mm. Uh, as I said, even even the stalwarts of polit political class in Kashmir, like Faru Dr. Farooq Abdullah, when Farooq Abdullah does not talk politics, that should tell you that how bad the situation is. If there is a political party right now in Kashmir, it is the JNK police, because only the police officers are writing articles and they are being published in various uh, you know news media organizations, and they they have the freedom uh, to speak. They have the freedom. They have freedom of speech and also freedom after speech. But as journalists who are supposed to to write and speak, they have neither freedom of speech nor freedom after speech. One year since the decision on Article 370, the climate of fear in Jammu and Kashmir is undeniable. The oppressive silence that lingers in households and empty media offices are just the side effects of a paralyzed local media.
Amnesty International India during its research found that the reality on the ground in Kashmir is very different from the narrative of normalcy set forth by both the government and mainstream news in India. There is only one message the government of India wants to share with Kashmiris and the world. Everything is fine. It's time for the government of India to stop its clampdown on freedom of press in Kashmir. It's time for the government of India to let Kashmir speak. اپنا تو کام ہے جلاتے رہے چراغ رستے میں چاہے دشمن یا دوست کا گھر ملے شکوے ظلمت شب سے تو کہیں بہتر تھا اپنے حصے کی کوئی شمع جلاتے جاتے